We had to join. We had to join. We had to join old Blevins Army. Three quid a week, bugger all to eat. There was a shortage of coal and this was mainly due to the labour shortage. Uh, they, at the beginning of the war, and for the first period of the war, uh, they called up all the young men, and of course the, the, the 20 to 35 year olds were the, the backbone of the coal mines, and therefore they had a very serious shortage of labour. Um, to, to cure this, he finally decided that uh, he would constrict la labour to the mines. The first reaction was it was Roman nice, Nars, wasn't it? Because he, he never got a brick at all. It was mm. at it for, for... That was the main, main uh, sort of reaction. It came from every corner of England and Wales and Scotland. But, um, I don't know, the war made a difference to us, I suppose, and we got we were less sort of class conscious or whatever, you know. Mm work conscious. We were all there and we were stuck with it. You know. and the more we joked and laughed, probably the better. The cage was rather frightening because you heard they pulled your leg a lot. You know, the, When you went the first day, you were divided up into groups and uh, you go ready to go down and they'd tell you, you'll be all right, kid, as long as that rope doesn't break. And you think, my God, you know. Of course, it drops at a fantastic speed. And then as it slows, the motor, the steam engine, whatever, flows, the cable stretches and you had this feeling of the cage actually moving up and down like that. But anyway, once that had happened, once or twice you got used to that. First job was down at the bottom of the shaft. I always had to turn tubs, those half, half ton tubs used to fall in a cage to a, to a, to a level, to a top, to a bottom. And we have to, I used to have to turn them into a, a different roadway, couple them in sets of ten, and couple them onto a, and all these are open. But you started at seven o'clock in the morning, it was non stop. At, at, at 20 minutes, lunchtime, I used to call it snap time, from 11 till 20 past, and you work full non stop again till the shift finishes half past two. Oh, they didn't take uh, they didn't take us uh, uh, seriously at all. Mm. They didn't take us seriously at all. Uh, but eventually, we became born in on them that we were, in fact, could be useful people. Mm. And once we got got used to it, and uh, we became virtually one of the lads eventually took some time and in some cases some of us never did but other of us got and you know we there's a, 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 a there was a tremendous rapport with them because these were people who worked together uh, and who took tremendous risks together and if anything went wrong anything bad happened you had to rely on these people and they had to rely on you for our very lives being a baby boy you got once you were finally discharged you, you didn't really get any recognition for it you didn't get a demob suit or a gratuity you didn't get a, a defense medal as you would have done in the, in the forces nothing at all really and the very sad part is that that a lot of members of the public, even today, think that Bevin boys were conscientious objectors and that's why they were sent into the mines, because they, for various reasons, refused or didn't wish to fight in the forces, which of course is very, very, very wrong, not the case at all. We've now got uh, a memorial which I unveiled in the Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire and then it stood for nearly a year before we were blessed with Her Royal Highness Countess of Wessex on the 7th of May dedicated that memorial. The chapel was filled 
by bevin boys, their families, with dignitaries of local authorities who had contributed funding. I was overwhelmed with the reception that the Bevin boys gave to their new memorial because it is to all 48,000 Bevin boys. And the, the main thing that I'm so proud to say is that now the Bevin boys have got their own memorial and recognition because now, since May the 7th, I've been over all over the country, from the Wirral to Norfolk, and people now stop and say, I was a Bevin boy. Bloody great boots and blisters on your feet, we had to join, we had to join, we had to join all Bevin's army. If it wasn't for the war, we'd be where we were before. Bevin, you're bombing!